Fees, Mike. Fees. Fees. Sorry, I don't, I don't think we caught that one. Can, can you start over? <laughs> Mike, we hate fees. Why? Yep. Because they're a rent extraction on transactions that everyday people like us are trying to make. And uh, today we're talking about Robinhood, which is eliminating the fees. And that's why we love Robinhood and why uh, Robinhood, I think, has, has taken over so much of the market. So should I... Should I get started, I guess, by breaking down some of the, the story of Robinhood and, and their rise to fame, their, their rise to where they are now? Yeah, that's a perfect name. Let's hear, let's hear the story. Right. From, yes, right. For fees, rags to riches, uh, giving back to the people. So uh, you know, the short story of Robinhood is they, they really advanced very quickly in the financial technology market, mostly because when they launched, uh, they had a very strong statement, which was, uh, we are a firm that is not going to have fees on trading. It was uh, started by two Stanford t- students. You know, we've heard that story many times before. They launched through technology channels, I think, which is a little bit different. They were uh, up on Hacker News and, and Pando Daily. And within about 30 days, they had already built this giant wait list of people who were interested in joining their product uh, because it's an exchange that you can buy stocks on without fees. So I think it's a really interesting insight because it was such a strong statement in the market, they immediately had a giant uh, list of people signing up because they launched through the the channels like a Hacker News or Pando Daily. Um, A lot of people, I think, in that target demographic looking for something bleeding edge were able to join in. And they've really pioneered time and time again in their short uh, company lifespan. They've been around since 2013. They launched with the no fees. Then they pulled off this waitlist concept, which I think a lot of people are trying to mimic now, um, basically building this giant pool of demand, building up this giant pool of hype uh, for the launch of their product. And I think that was pretty new. And it really started to show that the financial technology market today is about customer acquisition. And so what Robinhood learned and their unique insight was, what if we really tackle the customer acquisition problem? How do we do that? We make it fee, fee, fee free trading. Um, they also were able to target a very different demographic. Uh, by 2015, they said that about 80% of the firm's customers were in the demographic of the millennials, uh, which is what everybody's trying to sell to these days. Um, and it, it became a very viral app in that uh, people went back. So uh, about 50% of users were signing in almost daily to that application. So I think we're also starting to see this shift of, one, they, they tackled the customer acquisition problem. Two, uh, they targeted a different demographic that maybe other companies weren't looking at. And then three, they, they looked at it almost more like a social app where you want to check your trades, you, you want to jump in. Um, and they had this really smart secondary uh, referral program um, where you could bring your friends on at, uh, to create accounts. And yeah, they've just done a really good job on that whole customer acquisition side. So now it has about 3 million user accounts, at least um, as of last year. Um, and they've raised a bunch of money and they're still coming out with some pretty interesting uh, new statements in the market. So why don't you break down, I guess, some of the, the core features and just what, what Robinhood is really about um, in a nuts and bolts type fashion. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so I group these features into two main uh, buckets, uh, platform features and then interface. Um, at its surface, it's really just a basic uh, exchange where you can invest in stocks, ETFs, options, and crypto, um, which is one of the newer uh, branches that they've, they've gotten into. Um, it's a very basic intro brokerage. It's feels very much like a stash, although the interface is a little bit different just from a visual and and layout standpoint. um, I would bucket it with a stash where it's an intro to investing um, exchange. Uh, When we get into the actual buying and selling and like submitting those orders, uh, they make it very easy to place a market order. and you know, as you get more sophisticated in investing, you m- might start to look into more uh, limit orders where you're setting a specific price to buy or sell. They do offer that functionality, but you kind of have to search for it. I think what they are trying to do is just make it as easy as possible to make your first transaction. And I think that's cleverly designed. It's intentional. 
Um, it fits the millennial um, new user. And it actually also ties in very well with one of the new user uh, perks that they offer. When you refer a new user to their platform, they give you a free stock as a reward. So I think even that is designed and you also get a free stock when you sign up for your own user account, even if you aren't referred. I think that's all designed to get you over the hump of making your first purchase. And I think that is very clever, very smart. And um, again, one of the reasons why they've done so well at onboarding new customers. Um, yeah, do you have something there? Yeah, yeah, they're almost becoming like the direct to consumer. I mean, we've already used this term a few times on the show, but this like direct to consumer model for banking or investing, um, <clears throat> while previous platforms like like an ally, um, I, I guess have that model. I think this is even further of a leap towards social, towards uh, it being fun to use the platform, towards inviting your friends checking all the time. Now, there's probably some things we could discuss around maybe that not being so healthy, like maybe that's not um, necessarily the best way that, that users should be thinking about their finances, but they've really cracked, I think, this pretty interesting um, shift in mindset around an investment portfolio to now it's something that you just check on your app every day, you make trades, it's fun, your friends are on there. Um, so I think that's pretty interesting. Yeah, and they also position the interface, kind of getting into those features when you log into your account, they organize the interface such that the Apples, the Tesla, the Starbucks are all stocks that they're you know, softly recommending um, in the feed on the right uh, right hand side of the panel. So they're, they know that millennials think of brands, we think of trust, and they're kind of leveraging that. Um, which again, we've seen that on other platforms like Stash and in some other places that are focused on intro uh, brokerage. And I think they're, you know, they're continuing that. The other thing that I thought was very interesting on the interface is that uh, the, the home screen on the platform on the right, it kind of makes suggestions of like, these are things that you could potentially want to in invest in. And Bitcoin is listed at the top, which I, I don't have a ton of experience on Robinhood. Um, I've just kind of driven around it. Uh, but I don't know if that's a recent development as because of the, the current um, velocity that Bitcoin is kind of accelerating at again. Um, but it, it's very interesting to see that, you know, they know millennials are interested in this and, you know, they're putting it there front and center in the most prime real estate in their interface. Yeah. Yeah. Because they also launched um, zero fee trading for crypto, which is uh, smart and interesting. And I think, you know, the, the thing I didn't touch on yet exactly, and I, I think we've discussed in some other episodes is Robinhood really shifted the market, in my opinion. Um, once they sort of showed the power of customer acquisition, once they showed that uh, removing the fees drove um, like this giant wait list, I think a lot of other companies were really forced to pay attention uh, to what they're doing. And I think they're forced to respond and start thinking about how they're launching or, or what their fees are. So I, I love Robinhood because I think they shifted the market uh, as far as whether or not I'm going to use it. Um, I've downloaded it myself, played around. I'm not using it currently, um, but I'm also just not allocating in that way um, at, the, at this point. So maybe I'll pick it back up. Um, the, the interface is pretty appealing. Um, the, the no fee crypto is pretty appealing. I'm on Coinbase and their fees seem kind of outrageous sometimes. Um, but I know also fees in the market of crypto are changing over time. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure if I'll, if I'll really use it, but I just love what they did for the market. They're, they're sort of the, the Uber, in my opinion, um, in terms of they've made some very bold moves, some of which they've had to sort of backtrack on a little bit because of regulatory issues. Um, they just launched that, that savings account that, um, got some blowback as well because they were promising, um, a certain amount of yield in it. And so, I, yeah, I see them as sort of like spurring the market. Um, and I guess that takes me a little bit, and I'm curious to hear, you know, whether or not you're going to continue to use it. But my sort of prediction here is that as much as I love Robin Hood, as much as they drove, um, a lot of shifts in the market, I think that they've, they've really captured a lot of the low hanging fruit. And I think my concern with Robinhood as a company is that they saw a new space to move into. They had the most beautiful way of capturing that space. Um, but as far as where they head now, I think it gets a lot more competitive. I think there's a lot more players in the other markets that are going to try to enter like savings and banking. Um, 
I, my assumption is they have some other tricks up their sleeve. I'd really like to see them focus on IPOs. Um, so this, this year in 2019, there's a lot of hot IPOs coming up. There's Lyft just IPO and you've got uh, Uber coming up, you've got Slack coming up. So, um, I think like you sort of hinted at with where Bitcoin was sort of placed again, I'm not saying this is good or bad for investors, but, um, I think they could actually play smartly into sort of IPO hype, um, and being a, a great distribution channel for people buying into these, uh, new public offerings. And I'm not sure that's necessarily good, but I think it might be advantageous for their business. So I think they're going to have a tougher time moving forward, but also I think they have a few more tricks up their sleeve uh, in terms of uh, just where they might be able to head. But what's your take yeah, on, on, yeah, using it or, or just any prediction or anything you have? You know, I really love the way they, they've innovated, not necessarily because of the access that I'm going to get through their website, but I've seen trends happening as a result of you know, this, this exact kind of feeless. Uh, you see Vanguard offering hundreds of ETFs for free. Um, and I, and I think it's, it's kind of caused some waves in the industry and people are having to change their fee structure so that it's more advantageous to the user, which is never a bad thing. I'm personally not probably going to use Robinhood, uh, I would rank it up, up towards the higher end of the intro brokerages. It's probably one that, if not the number one recommendation I would make, it'd be one of them. Um, but for me, I'm just not that target customer. Uh, I think I have some, I don't want to say I'm s super sophisticated, but it's just not, the interface is just not what I need it to be. And I'll probably continue to stick with the uh, robo brokerages or some of the more advanced brokerages. Yeah. I think the last thing I want to bring up is just sort of interesting to to ponder as we think about Robinhood <clears throat> is that the the new generation, and really this is partly about what this show is about, is the new generation of investors. I think um, people will underestimate, in my opinion, the sort of interest that's going to build with just younger and younger generations as people get more access to financial institutions and, and opportunities like the different products we're discussing in the show. So um, one thing that's pretty exciting to me is thinking about, you know, when I was in high school, we did this sort of fake trading uh, finance class where you'd bake, you know, you buy stocks, but it was all sort of fake money through the class. And I think there's kids today that, yeah, they're in that same class and they're talking about, oh yeah, you can build your portfolio on this thing. And like low key at their desk, like in the back of the room, they're like actually trading stuff with their friends. Um, so I think we're going to see a lot more interest in investing, um, just with younger generations. And, and that's, I think Robin Hood is a part of that movement uh, or it's actually a reflection of the interest that was already there. So we'll only see that push farther uh, younger and younger investors. Yep. I like it. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well uh, yeah, Mike, I will catch you next time. All right. See you, David. Later.